What's up, class? Welcome back to another episode of the No Mod Chop class here on the School Zone. So a while back, I mentioned that I'd be putting together a video of all the cool, unique items that you can use to decorate your settlements. These are items that are not part of the build menu, but can be placed manually. I also set up a Reddit post so you guys could list some of the items you wanted included. Links to that post below. Thanks for the suggestions, by the way. I listed the contributors in the description. So this is going to be a three-parter video, and this video is part one. So if you want an item included that wasn't part Part of this video, go to that Reddit post and add your suggestions or requests. I'm going to include 10 items in this episode, although there may be more in the next parts depending on how many total we need to cover. We'll see. And some of the items might be more like categories, such as number one and number two on this list. What I'll do in post is create a sort of key legend so you guys can know whether an item is like storable, altered, and unique, and that sort of thing. So let's get right into it. Number one, non-storable items. Now normally if you want to decorate your settlements with stuff, you drop it from your inventory and place it in the appropriate place. If you don't know how to pick up items and rotate them on their axis, by the way, check out this video I posted a while back. Link in the description below and the iCard above. One of the tips in that video is how to do just that. However, not all fun decorative items can be stored in your inventory. This coat rack, for instance, isn't something that you can build, nor can you store it and drop it later for placement. These crates are another example. The hard hats can be stored, but the crates can't. Seems like these should be items that you can build in the workshop menu, but Bethesda never got around to adding them, even with the DLCs. So here's a short list of these items. Unfortunately, the only way to use these items as decoration is to take the time to physically drag them to your settlement from somewhere else in the Commonwealth. It does take effort, and it's one of the reasons Mark Montoya won the first settlement building contest I ran on the school zone. He found all the fancy, undamaged cars near the Starlight Drive-In, and physically push them into a settlement using corpses or construction signs to nudge them along. That probably took hours, but it was worth it in the end. By the way, the list of these non-storable decorations isn't exhaustive by any means, so if I left something out, just add it to our knowledge pool by leaving a comment down in the After School Club below. Number two on the list, altered items. In a related category to number one, sometimes you can snatch a cool item you find out in the field and store it to your inventory, but it doesn't look the same way when you drop it later out of your inventory and want to use it as decoration. A good many items fall into this category. Take this picture with the picture frame, for example. If I were to pick that up and store it in my inventory and then drop it for use as decoration somewhere else, the game will erase the picture in the picture frame, leaving only a blank wooden frame. Terrible, right? Don't worry, I'll reload after recording. But in order for me to preserve the picture in the picture frame, I had to physically drag the item by selecting it and just walking it in in order to place it in this spot. Now luckily, this was found just a block away in one of the broken buildings near Jamaica Plain. But you might not be so lucky with other cool items. Or maybe you want to decorate a settlement that's across the Commonwealth. Well, again, that's where the hard work comes in. It does take time, but it's worth it in the end for that extra finishing touch to your masterpiece. Here's a short list of those items. And of course, you guys can add more that I may have left out in the After School Club below. Number three, the giant Vim bottle. Now let's get down to some more specific items. I had a lot of people ask where I got the giant Vim bottle when I first showed it off in my Vault 42 build. You will need the Far Harbor DLC to get it though. But if you have that installed, it's found in the Vim Corporate Headquarters building. Here's a quick clip of my walkthrough where I found it. I'm just really curious if that big bottle up there is something you can take. Let's find out. Oh, you can. Oh my god. Oh my god. You can take it. I wonder if it'll stay big like that. You know what? Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna do a little experiment here. Alright. Drop, 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 drop. Okay. They're all there. And then this big Vim. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna drop this one. Yep, I figured it would just be named Vim. And it's big still. Oh, that's great. That's great. It's too big to carry, but I can grab it. Okay, that'll make an awesome little settlement decoration. Hope it stays that way. 
I think it will since it, uh, I don't know, maybe they'll blend together. Interestingly enough, unlike the items in category number two, the giant Vim bottle will keep its size if you store it. So you're safe there and it makes an awesome display item in your settlements. I just move it around to whatever settlement I showcase at the time since there's only one of them in the game. Number four, the Gilded Grasshopper. This is a fun item to display in your settlements, and most of you probably know how to get this item already. In case you don't, it's part of a quest of the same name involving an area of downtown Boston called Faneuil Hall. Hopefully I pronounced that right for you Bostonians out there. Now you can start the quest by reading a file in Nick Valentine's office, or just by going there and clearing out the super mutants. Make your way up to the top where the grasshopper sits as a weather vane. But be careful with this item, it does fall through display racks very easily. The rubber mat technique I showed you in my first miscellaneous tips video may help. But uh, before I knew about that, it had fallen out of my Vault 42 build down to the ground and almost got kind of camouflaged in the brush, so I lucked out there. Number 5, the Lab Scales. In the railroad base near Tinker Tom is a shiny set of scales. You can store this item, it's immutable, but it's only one of a kind, so don't misplace it. Looks nice on the shelf of an office or maybe next to a vendor where they might actually use it in their trades, you know? Number 6, the Mother Icon. This is a nifty item to place on a mantle or in a shrine of some kind, or just as a modern art piece or something in your settlements. It also comes from the Far Harbor DLC, and can be found in the Children of Adam Shrine during the Visions in the Fog quest. If you miss it there, you can also find one in the Pump Control building during the Reformations quest. Take some finagling to get it to stand up right, but uh, you can get it to do that. And if not, you can just lean it against something, you know, it might still look pretty cool. Number 7, the Garden Gnomes. Seems like Far Harbor added a lot of little cool decorative items, but the Garden Gnomes make a return from Fallout 3 in New Vegas all around Far Harbor. While this isn't totally a unique item, they aren't that common. However, you can find four in one spot on the roof of the Vim Pop Factory near the dome. I've got to see what this is. Oh my god. It's like a sick and twisted gnome shrine. Oh, that's just hilarious. Alright guys, well there's a fun little easter egg for you. Number 8, the Giant Giddy Up Buttercup. There's a larger than normal sized Giddy Up Buttercup at a place called Wilson Automatoys, specifically in the corporate headquarters. In fact, going there can be part of a side quest for Arlen Glass at the Slog, where he'll also reward you with number 9, a tiny Giddy Up Buttercup. He'll ask you to travel to Wilson Automatoys to get him some Giddy Up Buttercup spare parts for a project. Return to him with what he needs and he'll give you a tiny version which looks really cool on a shelf. The bigger version can fit in nicely in a play area or an arcade that you make in your settlement, you know, that sort of thing. And number 10, the clean stuff. Last but not least, for those of you who like to decorate with common household items but get annoyed with all the rusty or dirty versions like someone couldn't rinse off a freaking plate around here, there are clean and unused versions of almost everything in the Cabot house. And some of this stuff respawns too. I can't remember exactly, but you might need to complete the Cabot House quest line for the items to be marked as safe for the taking though. Otherwise they might appear red, you know, and you'd have to steal them. But you can find all the cool clean items that you need in that house. Even down to things like napkins. <laughs> And before we end the episode, I do have a highly requested bonus tip. A lot of people ask me how I'm able to build with the vault tech assets above ground or get my hands on all the Nuka World assets. These two DLCs made it part of their quest lines that the building assets unlock when you complete various mini quests. To be able to use the vault tech assets outside of Vault 88, you just need to complete all the mini quests. I made a walkthrough of all the vault tech quests that I'll link down below. Nuka World is similar. You have to complete each subsection of Nuka World to unlock those assets. In some cases, you may just be able to visit the area, but you might as well complete the DLC because it is really fun. So hopefully that helps players who see me building with vault Tech or Nuka World items know how they came about. And I can just link them to this part of the video if anybody asks in a future video. And that's going to wrap up part one of this mini-series. There are many more items to cover, so stay tuned for part two and part three. I know a lot of veteran players have already collected most of these items, but I wanted to have this video up for archival posterity, so to speak. That way, 
way, if anybody asks about these in the comment section of a future video, I can just link them here. And there's still time to request some more unique items in that subreddit post before I get to part two and part three. Link again to that post down below in the iCard above. Thanks again for watching and supporting the channel, guys. And if you want to support the channel in more ways, not only is my Patreon taking on new members of the Student Council, but you can now hit that Join button for added perks. That's right, the Join button is live. Thanks again, guys. Throw a like on this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy building, and class dismissed.